Hey everybody, one of the GMG review. Something new today. It's gonna be Warhammer the Horus Heresy Aeronautica Imperialis. A whole new game set in the Horus Heresy um, using existing miniatures from the Aeronautica Imperialis line and pitting legions of Stardis aircraft against each other uh, with some Divisio Aeronautica uh, support and or bad guys in dogfighting games. There's even a Custodes plane to come and ruin your day uh, and uh, back the loyalists if you want them to. So this is a really neat, uh, just sort of, it, <laughs> It's new army lists, effectively, or new new um, new uh, new uh, what should we call it? Air core lists for the the existing core game of Aeronaut Imperialis. So core rules here, you can check out my review of Aeronaut Imperialis itself if you want to see the the gameplay. It's entirely the same as the current edition of Aeronaut Imperialis. You can watch the Let's Play with the orcs and stuff like that and see the core rules. Um, we will be playing some games of it going forward, but the the core rules in here are not going to have changed. So aircraft-wise, we have access to, so Fire Raptors, Thunderhawks, Xiphon Interceptors, and Storm Eagles are going to be the core of the Legions of Stardis. And then, of course, we have the, um, the current uh, Imperial Navy ships that will be able to be used by the Divisio Aeronautica. So Thunderbolts and Furies, Avengers, Lightnings, Marauders, the Arvis Lighter, Hydra Flak Berries, the Basilisk Anti-Guns, and um, the Ares Gunship. So two squadron lists... And a MacGuffin setting, so what's going on in the Horus Heresy? And where are we setting this little campaign? So this campaign is going to be set on a Forge World between the forces of the Space Wolves and the local defenders, so the Divisio Aeronautica that's trying to hold them back. Basically, part of the Forge goes rogue, the Space Wolves get sent to take them down, and even after they surrender and like the bad guys are all dead, the Space Wolves are like, never again, and just start blowing everything out of the sky. Those are nice color sections for the various different squadrons. There's very cool like um, special rules and stuff too. So like for instance, the uh, the Xiphons that are piloted by the word bearers, they sacrifice the crewmen inside them and then they become this like melded demon plane which was actually alive. So that was really neat. And then the, the whole MacGuffin for the Xiphon is that only Space Marines can pilot them because the Gs are so heavy, you can't get the most of them if you're just an unaugmented human. So they require like an augmented human to play with them because they're just too too crazy maneuverable otherwise. Um, so same core mechanics, right? You're going to have your maneuvers. You place your maneuvers down, then your initiative. So you roll a d6 and go see who's going first. Tailing fire, anybody who managed to get into the rear arc of somebody and within a certain number of uh, hexes can shoot. And of course, if you have tail gunner, you can return fire. Uh, your movement, you go back and forth um, with the initiative uh, roll, choosing who goes first. And then you alternate firing, everybody shoots after their final positions are done. And then the end phase, you check for stalls and crashing and stuff like that. So same core mechanics, nothing new here. And then we get into the campaign. The Fall of Vanaheim. This is the Forge World. The Vanaheim Mighty Ducks. They have to go up against the, uh, the Wolves of Space, the Oka Fenrika. Um, and of course, they are trying to burn this Forge World as it is providing arms and weapons. And look at this, this is why it's an air war, because it's a huge floating fortress outside of, it's in deep space. And so this isn't necessarily taking place inside of um, the, or the, the planetary's uh, atmosphere. And that's why you can see here in the picture, it's a little more Death Starry, right? It's the exterior of this giant forge world that you're fighting over top of. So it's an orbital hive, which I think is super cool. And then down on the surface, there's ice canes and stuff. I think that's probably the reverse of that new board they'll be selling. So you get the background for the mission. Your scenarios. Now, these are the same scenario list, I believe, as in the core rule book and weather rules. So yeah, same core scenarios. Dogfighting, bombing missions, troop landings, a sky fortress attack, a canyon run. And that could just easily be like, you're going to, to blow up the generator station, right? Canyon run on the surface of the orbital hive. Bandits on the river, the straggler, search and rescue. So same core missions. And then two squadron lists. We've got... Oh, where is it? Mm, that's it. Uh, upgrades. So Legion of Stardust. The biggest change here is you're going to be able to add a Space Marine Legion special rules, either traitor or loyalist, to your planes to sort of flavor them to your own... Um, Primarch's Legion. So the core upgrades uh, are pretty much the same as in Core Aeronautica. So Ceramite Plating, Infernum Halo Launchers, Veterans, Armored Cockpits, Infrared Targeting, and Tech Marines. Um, 
Then you have these, which are your, your, you can sometimes buy them once, but a lot of times all the planes buy them if you're from a specific uh, Space Marine Legion. So the Dark Angels can be a Ravenwing veteran. This aircraft's powered by a veteran of the Ravenwing. Once per game, you can reroll any single dice roll. However, it must be accepted separately. You can buy this one more than once in replacement of the veteran upgrade. So the veteran can only be once in a whole squadron, whereas the loyalist uh, Ravenwing veteran can be everybody. So all your planes can get a, a reroll once per game. White Scars get uh, Swift of Wing. Uh, they gain the Jinx special roll for three points. Space Wolves get Peerless Hunter for three points. Um, you get add two to the firepower characteristic of any weapon with an ammo characteristic of unlimited and resolving tailing fire. So basically you're really good um, when you're tailing the opponent because you're a hunter. So if you manage to, it, it's worth giving up a turn shooting to maneuver into a place where you're in tailing fire because all of a sudden you add two to your firepower for all your main guns. Imperial Fist get an Aegis pilot. Uh, you get a veteran interceptor pilot. Your structure points go up by one. So you made your, your aircraft tougher, which is a big deal for the Xiphon. For five points, and all of them can do it. Master of the Skies for a Blood Angel, two points. Um, once per game, the aircraft can increase or decrease its current speed equal to twice its throttle value. <laughs> and then Iron Pans get an Iron Father. Basically, they all have Tech Marines on them for six points. Once per game, the aircraft can choose to repair during the end phase on a four plus, get a structure point back. So you can't take a Tech Marine, but you can take Iron Fathers instead. And then Ultramarines and Alaris pilot. This Ultramarine uh, aircraft is piloted by a specialist. Once per game, when they are activated during the movement phase, they can discard their maneuver and choose a different ace maneuver. Very cool. You can basically swap out your maneuver you're doing. And then Salamanders for four points. You have extra ceramic plating. In addition, once per game, you can ignore the effects of extra damage from a single enemy weapon. Uh, you can't get tempered. Basically, you combine tempered armor and ceramic plating into one upgrade. And then Raving Eyes get Shadowbird. Uh, they get Stealth minus one. So basically you count as one less elevation when you're shooting them with ground weapons. They're known for hiding from defense networks. And then your Traitor Legions. The Emperor's Children get a Phoenix Pilot. Um, once per game, this aircraft can reroll a dice roll. However, it must be uh, taken. In addition, increase the Ace Maneuvers characteristic of the pilot by one. So once per game, you get a reroll, and this replaces the Veteran Upgrade. Oh, it doesn't replace the veteran upgrade, this one. Never mind. So you're basically a veteran, and you can also increase your ace maneuvers by one. That's crazy. That means you can do some crazy maneuvers with uh, some of the heavier planes. Iron Warriors get Hullbreaker missiles for three points. Uh, it's a special payload. Uh, the aircraft with this upgrade improves the extra damage X special rule, but it's crack missiles, dual crack missiles by one. So you have extra damage five plus instead of six. Night Lords get Anguish, Anguish engines for one point. Uh, an aircraft within three X's of one or more enemy aircraft with this upgrade reduce the handling by one. So your handling goes down because you can't stand the screams coming through the radio. It's like uh, it's like Event Horizon. They you fly near the light and was playing, you just hear people screaming and chanting that they're in hell. Uh, World leaders get Red Hunter for three points. Uh, they're really good at firing at close range. Once per game during the firing phase, the aircraft can add one to the results of all hit rolls when firing at close range. Death Guard to get the Shroud of Barbarous for five points. It's a chemical payload uh, derived from the smog of Barbarous. Once per game after moving in the movement phase, this aircraft can activate its Shroud of Barbarous. Until the end of the round, uh, they cannot be targeted by ground defenses, nor can this aircraft fire ground defenses. You basically pop smoke. Your Thousand Suns get a Corvidae Initiate for six points. Uh, if the night fighting or bad weather uh, rules are in use, the aircraft can fire at medium range without reducing the number of firepower dice. In addition, once per game, the attacker can ignore the minus one to hit for being altitude different than your shot or your target. The Sons of Horus get War Masters chosen. This uh, aircraft is piloted by a veteran. Uh, this upgrade may only be taken by one aircraft in the force. Once per game, a force that contains this aircraft can reroll the dice when rolling for initiative. That's huge. Wanting to see who goes first. Uh, word bearers get possessed pilot. <laughs> the aircraft is powered by a veteran touched by denizens of the warp. Once per game during this firing phase, the pilot can increase the short and medium range of its weapon by two hexes. So your short range and medium range go up, and long range doesn't change. And then Alpha Legion get a Sachi pilot for one point. After both sides deploy their forces, this aircraft can be redeployed following the deployment rules for the scenario. Just put just put yourself somewhere else for one point. That's amazing for one point. And then campaign abilities, you get the same campaign core rules that the Space Marines get. Uh, and then the core rule, the rules for the actual planes are exactly the same. So the Xiphon's the same as is in 40K, or um, the current 40K universe. Same with the Storm Eagle, same point values even. And the upgrades as well, Fire Raptors are the same, Thunder Rock's the same. 
Get your Daedalus Storm Cannon for the ground defenses and a Sky Super Missile Launcher. And then the Divisio Aeronautica um, is almost exactly the same as the Imperial Navy. Now you get ejector seats, flare or chaff launchers, infrared targeting, Imperial Ace, and an armored cockpit. And then you're, th again, the planes are identical, so Thunderbolts. Because I mean, in, in 40K, you're just using 30K technology that you've managed to maintain for 10,000 years. Your Avenger Strike Fighters, Lightnings, Marauders Bombers, Destroyers, and Colossus, and then a Marauder Pathfinder, an Arvis Lighter, no guns. Flak batteries, anti-aircraft guns, and then the same campaign abilities. And then finally, the Ares gunship. Oh my god, this thing. 43 points, and three of these is like its own army. Five structure, two throttle, one to five ace maneuvers, handling three plus. Max speed five, max uh, min speed zero can hover, and then max altitude five. It has a heavy blaze cannon, front four, six, zero, four plus damage. Unlimited ammo and extra damage 5 plus, and then a Magna Blaze Cannon 343, 3 plus damage. Unlimited ammo, extra damage 4 plus. That is a horrifying amount of unlimited firepower on that thing. Just nuts. And they can have a firebomb cluster, short range and rear only. It's a ground attack, extra damage 5 plus, 6 firepower dice. So either the Legion of Stardust or Divisio Aeronautica Force can include them, or you can have a force entirely made up of them, as long as you're a loyalist. Uh, they don't count as a legionary though, and they can't take legion upgrades. Man, the thing's amazing. And you get a nice quick ref, some punchable and um, photocopy tokens, and that's it. Very fun. I like this. I mean, it's a kind of cheap and cheerful way of, of, of reskinning the game. Uh, there's cards as well with your ace skills and stuff and your pilot cards um, that you can use to play the game. But... I'm excited to play this. I'll be honest. This is going to be fun. Uh, there's a bunch of Imperial planes. I think uh, Nick's going to do the Divisio Aeronautica. And I'll do Raven Guard because I just did Raven Guard. So I'll make a Raven Guard um, fleet to go with them. And uh, maybe even some allied planes. Just throw them in and do a couple of extra legions as like allies. Maybe we'll do some Space Wolf ones on the side too to, to ally with them. Have some special Space Wolf upgrades in there. Uh, and we'll play some games because I love Aeronautica. And reskinning it to the thing I'm currently excited about. We'll, we'll take to the skies. And, uh, and blast some stuff for the Horus Heresy. So fun little release, didn't require any extra effort, like the, the planes are all available and stuff already. It looks like they're gonna have that game mat out where you can play on the um, outskirts of Anaheim, which I think is neat. But other than that, we're ready to rock and roll and play some Aeronautic Imperialis Warhammer the Horus Heresy. So big thanks for watching. We'll see if more GMG reviews in the future. It's on a mash. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements, like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.